In this video lecture, I'm going to be discussing derivatives of logarithms. Recall from before we were introduced to the natural log, sometimes referred to as ln of x or lin of x. So in the case when we are evaluating the derivative of lin of x for whenever x is greater than 0, then we have the following formula, that the derivative of lin of x is equal to 1 divided by x. Notice that this is certainly defined for the denominator cannot be 0. Um, now there will be another case where we may have that we are computing the derivative with respect to x of lin applied to some function. So then in this case observe that we now need the intervention of the chain rule because you could now refer to g of x as the inner function and lin, lin of x as the outer function. Right, so in this case the chain rule tells you that it's a derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner. And we know that the derivative of the outer is 1 over the variable. So it's 1 over whatever variable lin was defined in terms of and then evaluated at the inner, which is g of x, multiplied to the derivative of the inner, so the derivative of g, g of x. So observe that this now simplifies to the derivative of the inner function divided by the inner function, which is a neat formula for you to remember. Another thing from, to mention here that's important is that the derivative of lin of x, which equals to 1 of x, this can be easily derived. So you can derive this from first principles, meaning you can then calculate this using the formula involving a limit, right, which was covered in the first lecture on derivatives. Right, so the next type of derivative we would be considering is a logarithm base a. So of course again I'm going to impose here that x must be greater than 0. So in the case where you're required to compute the derivative of log base a, then we have the following formula again can be derived from first principles and we have that the derivative of this is equal to 1 divided by lin evaluated at base a times your variable x. And then similarly, a chain rule formula. So if we were required to compute the derivative, so I meant to write down x here, sorry, a in here, my apologies. Right, so derivative of log base a of x is 1 divided by lin of the base times the variable x. And what happens if we had log base a of a function g of x? Then again, you can refer to g of x as your inner function and log base a as your outer. So applying the chain rule to what we have just learned is going to be the derivative of the outer, which is 1 over lin of the base. I'm just looking at what's written above, being multiplied to the variable. But remember, when we take the derivative of the outer, we evaluate it at the inner function. So I'm putting in the inner function in its place times the derivative of the inner function. And then we can simplify this. So observe that this now becomes 1 over lin a times the derivative of the inner function divided by the inner function. So it's a neat way for you to remember again. Right, so let's now apply these formulas to some examples. So we are required to compute the derivative of the following functions. We are given that y equals to log base 3 of x. So what is y prime? We have our formula. Our formula tells us that it's 1 divided by lin base a of the variable. I said multiply to the variable. So we've got base 3. So it's 1 divided by lin 3 multiplied to the variable x. So it's as simple as that. Let's go to the next problem. So now observe, it's log base 2 of a function. So we have an inner function in here. So this certainly requires the intervention of the chain rule. So we're now going to use this formula. So y prime then equals to 1 divided by lin of 2, because it's base 2, times g prime of x divided by g of x. And then plugging that information in, 
The derivative of the inner function, so the inner function is 3x squared plus 4x, that is equal to 6x plus 4 divided by g of x, which is 3x squared plus 4x. And then, of course, just simplify that. Well, there's not much to simplify. It's a matter of just rewriting it. If you want, you can then distribute the limit of 2 into each of those terms. And going to our last question in here, y equals to lin of 5x cubed minus 2x raised to the power 3 over 2. So we are required to compute y prime, of course, um, and observe that we seem to have an inner function in here, with that inner function being 5x cubed minus 2x raised to the power 3 over 2. But since we are working with logs, we actually know a lot more about them because we've gone through some properties. And if you recall your properties, whenever you have an exponent, you can rewrite that as a coefficient. So that means y can be rewritten as 3 over 2 times lin of 5x cubed minus 2x. And so we can now work with this version. So once again, we do indeed have an inner function, but this time the inner function is 5x cubed minus 2x. And we're now going to go to our formulas that we've written down whenever we're working with a chain rule. It's the derivative of the inner function divided by the inner function. So that's our inner function. We've got a constant. So it's 3 over 2 that's going to be multiplied to the derivative of gx divided by gx. So it's 3 over 2 that's being multiplied to the derivative of 5x cubed minus 2x. The derivative of 5x cubed is 15x squared. The derivative of minus 2x is minus 2. I'm just going to rewrite 5x cubed minus 2x in the denominator. And so that is your final answer there.